Howdy! The purpose of this video is to talk about diffusion mechanisms in solid materials. Now why do I care about diffusion in materials? Well, um, here's a couple examples. Maybe I want to design a container that's holding a pressurized gas. If I want that gas to stay inside the container, I'd better know something about how that gas could potentially diffuse out through my solid. Um, hydrogen embrittlement is a big problem in a lot of gas and oil pipes. So if I have a metal pipe and hydrogen um, atoms or molecules diffuse into that metal, uh, they create, uh, they make it more brittle and more susceptible to failure. So again, I need to know something about diffusion rates uh, in solid substances. Finally, uh, I could um, selectively increase the concentration of some element, like carbon, uh, selectively just along the surface of a material. And when I do this with an iron carbon alloy, this is called case hardening. So by increasing the carbon concentration along the surface, I make it harder on the surface, but still tougher on the interior of the material. And this, this serves to be an excellent combination of properties. So in all of these cases, I need to know something about how atoms and molecules are moving in a solid. Now, you've already um, experienced diffusion in gases and liquids. Um, you know, maybe you've seen somebody drop a, a drop of food coloring in a liquid. Maybe you've done an experiment where you open a bottle of perfume on one side of a room and you, after some period of time, you'll smell it throughout the room. In this case, we have atoms that are relatively free to move around. Uh, and so what happens is if I start off with atoms clustered in some concentration in one particular area, you know, all of these atoms have a velocity that's associated with the temperature. And over time, they're going to spread out throughout this fixed volume. And eventually they're gonna be well mixed. So that's how diffusion happens in a gas and a liquid, right? But what about in a crystalline solid? Oftentimes we think about crystalline solids as being very fixed and rigid substances. And that's pretty true, um, but at any given temperature, the atoms in that solid are always vibrating a little bit. We talked about interatomic bonding curves before, right? So the higher the temperature is, the more vibration there is gonna be between atoms. And this allows atoms to move a little bit with respect to each other. So let's talk about the two principal mechanisms of diffusion. The first is gonna be interstitial diffusion. And in this case, the atom um, that, that I'm uh, thinking about is sitting in an interstitial site, right? So again, at any temperature, all those neighboring atoms are vibrating a little bit. And at some point, if the temperature is high enough, there's some probability that this atom is going to move. See, so it, in this case, it's hopping to the right. Now it's important to know that any of these particular motions are equally likely, right? Um, there's nothing that is telling this atom, hey, go to the right. Uh, so, you know, when we talk about fixed first law, we're gonna have to kind of um, think about what that means. Why do I have concentration fluxes of atoms moving in one direction? But on the atomic level, this atom is equally likely to hop in any particular direction unless that direction is already occupied, right? So that's interstitial diffusion. What about substitutional diffusion? And that's when an atom is sitting on a site that is usually occupied by some other atom. So if I'm looking at this lattice, there's nowhere for this atom to go, right? It's not gonna hop into an interstitial site and all of the neighboring substitutional sites are occupied. So how do I get the atom to move at all? And the answer is vacancies. We already talked about different kinds of point defects. If I have a vacancy here, and if I allow these atoms to vibrate, um, that vacancy can potentially move. And what does that mean when a vacancy moves? All it means is that this atom is gonna hop from one site to another, right? And so eventually this vacancy could wander along and it could interact with this atom that I'm interested in following. And by taking this one step, this one hop to the right, I've, I've, essentially, um, I've, I've essentially allowed this substitutional atom uh, to diffuse. It has moved in the lattice, right? Um, one important thing is again, right? This vacancy is equally likely to move in one direction or another. So diffusion is what happens when we get this large assemblage of random hopping back and forth. And they're going to tend to homogenize the composition over time. We talked about crystalline solids. What about an amorphous solid? Can I have uh, interstitial or substitutional? 
uh, diffusion in an amorphous solid? And the answer is no, because in an amorphous solid, there's no crystal lattice. So these terms don't mean anything, right? Substitution is when an atom is sitting in place of uh, an atom that is usually occupying one specific lattice site. Interstitial, it's, it's inside of different atoms that are in a fixed rigid lattice. So in an amorphous solid, um, yes, it's possible for atoms to hop from one position to another. And over time, if I had a concentration of atoms in one type, they're going to tend to homogenize. So they'll randomly make their way so they're evenly dispersed throughout the material. Um, but this is not uh, what I would call an interstitial or substitutional mechanism because there's no crystal lattice. Okay, in summary, atoms and solids are constantly moving. That's what allows them to diffuse around. Individual atoms are going to be equally likely to move in one direction or another. We talked about two mechanisms, interstitial and substitutional. Substitutional requires a vacancy for this mechanism to happen, right? For this, uh, for this substitutional atom to diffuse from one site to another, there needs to be a vacancy on that site. Finally, we talked about diffusion uh, in amorphous solids, and it certainly happens but we don't refer to it in terms of these terms because those are specifically referring to a material that's on a fixed crystal lattice.